Hi everybody, one of the most difficult diagrams in the course is being able to draw the impact that trade unions have in monopsony controlled labour markets. You need to be able to nail this diagram. Let's get moving. On the y-axis it's a labour market so we always have the wage. On the x-axis we always have the quantity of workers. No shortcuts there. Make sure that's all correct. We start by drawing a monopsony controlled labour market which we're used to, we've done that many times. So we start by drawing the supply of labour, which is equal to the average cost of labour, so label that as such. Marginal cost of labour is upward sloping twice as steep, greater than the average cost of labour. And we draw a downward sloping demand curve, which is equal to the marginal revenue product, as we're used to. What we want to now draw is the competitive outcomes on this diagram. The competitive outcomes we find where supply meets demand. So we want to get that on there, and that gives us QC and WC. QC, the quantity of workers, competitive outcome. WC, wages, competitive outcome. So label it like this. We then want to work out the monopsony quantity and wage as well. We get that where MRP is equal to the marginal cost of labour. So you go to that point and label that QM. And remember, the wage rate we need to read off the supply curve. The supply curve is the wage. That's where we get the wage from at this quantity. And that gives us WN. So that's a good start. We start by drawing a monopsony control labour market. Now we want to add in the impact of a trade union. So a trade union coming in will set a wage or will bargain for a wage higher than the monopsonist wage. <clears throat> so you put that on your diagram to start with. I call that wage WTU and put it nice and simple in between WM and WC. You know at that wage rate there is a limit to the number of workers that are under the control of the trade union, a limit to the number of workers that are willing to work at that wage rate, and that limit can be found on the old supply curve. So by going across, draw that dot in. That is the limit, and that limit is really important. Um, so at that wage rate, the supply curve is now going to be horizontal, we know that up until the limit, uh, which is the new labour supply curve and the average cost curve and the marginal cost curve up until this point. So now all of these workers are only willing to work at the wage rate of WTU. So the supply curve becomes horizontal up until this point. Beyond this point, we now know that the supply curve reverts back to the original and the marginal cost curve reverts back to the original. So we need to draw that and make it clear. So the supply curve reverts back to the original. So make that clear. In your script, just bold it, make it look really obvious, but crucially, label it. That's what makes the examiner know what you're doing. So you want to label this supply trade union, which is equal to the average cost of labor. So that's the new supply curve now. The marginal cost curve, well, we know that at this point, the marginal cost curve reverts back to the original. So we need to find this point on the marginal cost curve. So we take it up, that takes us around there. Okay, so that's just that point, but now on the marginal cost curve, and now the marginal cost curve is back to the original, beyond that point. There is a vertical gap, we just connect that gap up, so your ruler is very important here. And connecting it up gives us that black line, as we are used to, and we want to label that. We can label that the marginal cost of labour, but now the trade union. Okay, so it's the new marginal cost of labour. Fantastic. So these are our new supply curves, average cost curves, marginal cost curves, nailed and drawn beautifully and correctly. We now need to make sure that we have the quantity of workers done as well. And to get that, we go to where MRP is equal to marginal cost. That gives us our quantity. So that is quite easy to do. We we'll call that QTU. So then you've got a wage trade union and a quantity trade union, making it very clear to the examiner what you're looking at and what you are going to be analysing. That's it with this diagram. You might want to draw a little arrow showing the increase in quantity, and a little arrow maybe showing the increase in wage. Absolutely fine. But now we go to our checklist, and our checklist is telling us some very important things. Of course, we need to check whether we've aced the diagram. We've labelled our axis, we've labelled all of our curves, lots going on, especially this labelling we've nailed. And we've labelled our equilibria everywhere, beautifully done, lots going on. To make sure you've aced it is really important. But in your head, did you have these other things that you wanted to show as well? The kinked supply curve, we've shown how the new supply curve is kinked. Have we shown the vertical gap in the new marginal cost curve? We have, and it's beautifully labelled 
We are looking good there. Have we shown the higher wages with the trade union getting involved? Oh yeah, we have. It looks stunning. Have we shown the higher employment? Oh my goodness, look at that we have. It looks beautiful. So having this in your head, really make sure that when you finish the diagram, you have finished the diagram. On top of that, have we drawn it in pencil? Have we used a ruler? All very important things to make sure that you have. And have you drawn it big? Yes, we have. That's this diagram nailed. Thank you so much for watching. This one requires practice. Get it right. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.